In order for a large plant with many tissue types to survive, it must successfully divide the labor of its multiple, substantial metabolic requirements. Because of this need for specialization, the tissues devoted to energy capture are not necessarily the same tissues where this energy is most needed. Therefore, it is important for a plant to be able to transport sugars from one tissue to another potentially distant tissue where the sugars are to be used. The mechanism underlying this transport process is known as the pressure flow hypothesis. Think for a moment about what tissues in a plant are likely to be a source of sugar. Hopefully you remember that sugars are initially synthesized by a plant in its photosynthetic tissues, the leaves. These newly synthesized sugars are then moved into the phloem by active transport. Remember that active transport requires energy expenditure. It is important to note at this time that the phloem is positioned adjacent to the xylem, which carries the plant's water. This proximity has an important consequence. The actively supported influx of sugar into the phloem results in the passive movement of water from the xylem, where sugar concentrations are low, into the phloem, where sugar concentrations are high. This passive movement of water following a concentration gradient to dilute a solute is known as diffusion. The diffusion of water into the phloem creates an area of high pressure in the region surrounding a sugar source. As a result, fluid within the phloem is driven away from the sugar source. Now think for a moment about where a plant is likely to have the greatest energy expenditure. Perhaps you identified areas of growth, such as the tips of roots or stems. In these locations of energy usage, Sugar is actively transported out of the phloem and into cells where it will be used. As sugar concentrations in the phloem drop, so too does the amount of water influx from the xylem. Low levels of water influx from the xylem create a region of low pressure in the phloem near a sugar sink. With high pressure areas near a sugar source, and low pressure areas near a sugar sink, fluids in the phloem are driven to flow down the pressure gradient from source to sink. Therefore, sugars made in the leaves may be transported to the roots where growth may need to occur. However, it is important to note that the leaves are not always the sugar source. While on a typical summer day, photosynthesis occurring in the leaves produces sugars which may be used elsewhere, for example the roots, it is also possible for the plant to store its sugar below ground in a root, such as a carrot, to prepare for a cold winter. In the following spring, the carrot will serve as the sugar source when the plant desires to grow new leaves. In this case, early spring leaves are in fact a sugar sink. No matter which direction sugar is flowing, the mechanism for its flow is accurately described by the pressure flow hypothesis.